What's up guys, Stan Lake here with Catching Creations. Tonight we are in South Carolina, the Piedmont of South Carolina, looking for water snakes and turtles and different types of frogs. I'm joined tonight with Thomas and our buddy Ben from the Orient Society. We're gonna have a great time. I hope you guys can come along on this adventure with us and please wear your seatbelts. <laughs> What's going on guys? We're down here at a vernal pool uh, in South Carolina, which is a temporary pool. Um, it's, it's seasonal, it dries up, it fills up, that's kind of what it does every year. And we have this little Midland water snake. Uh, he was kind of skirting the edge. You can hear all the tree frogs calling. I guess he was looking for a meal. He was just kind of out there on the edge. I saw him try to go in the water and I was able to get him beforehand. We're just going to let him go, carry about on his way. Thought it was a pretty cool, cool little snake. What's up guys? We are here right now with a Cope's Gray Tree Frog. He is calling my ears off. Really loud, loud, loud bunch of frogs right now. But they're breeding right now <laughs> in this temporary uh, wetland, this vernal pool down here. And uh, we're just hearing them and seeing them everywhere. They're probably one of my favorite tree frog species just because they're one of the staples of the Piedmont of North Carolina and South Carolina. A very common tree frog. I really love these guys. Just check them out. Come here and check them out. Guys, there's a huge ish <laughs> female bullfrog. Let's see if we can get her. <laughs> well, that was anticlimactic. <laughs> but check her out. This is a female bullfrog. They actually get a little bit bigger than this, but this is a very cool frog. This is one of the biggest, actually, this is the biggest species of frog that we have here in the southeast. And uh, as you can see, she's got these big meaty legs and she uses them for dancing. Hello, my darling. Hello, my baby. Hello, my ragtime girl. Anyway, not much else I can say. These guys will eat literally everything that comes by. I've seen them, uh, if you've ever had like a high school biology class and you've dissected them, uh, everything from snakes to other frogs to invertebrates, uh, they'll eat a little bit of everything that they can grab a hold of as long as it's not going to injure them in the process. And they're just a very cool frog. She's a little bit cool actually right now, which is probably why she's moving so slow. But it's a really uh, humid night out and a lot of amphibians are out moving along, as you can hear behind us with the gray tree frogs. Hey guys, I'm Ben. I'm out here with Stan and Thomas. We're out this uh, pretty cool looking pond looking for turtles and uh, found this it's a eastern mud turtle uh, just sitting down here in the vegetation. And, uh, pretty cool little turtles. This is full grown. Um, they're kind of scavengers. They eat basically anything. Um, a lot of dead stuff so they actually clean up wetlands so they're pretty beneficial. And uh, They'll, uh, they'll steal your bait if you're ever fishing too, so <laughs> gotta watch out for them. But uh, otherwise, really cool species and uh, neat little find. There he goes. What's up guys? I'm gonna give you a little life lesson right now. When you're out at a pond in the middle of the night with a bunch of bright lights and you go to speak about an animal, sometimes, Flies will fly down your throat and you'll cough a whole bunch. It's a, it's a great event. So check this out. This is a northern water snake. We've had a little debate among ourselves whether it's a northern or a midland water snake. But despite the fact that they're both basically the same snake, one just a subspecies of, of the other, uh, they're actually from the same genus, which is Nerodia. And the species name is Cypodon, or Cypodon. I always get kind of confused the pronunciation of that. But uh, this is just a common water snake. It's harmless, uh, non-venomous snake. Now a lot of people will mistakenly kill them thinking that they are a copperhead or a water moccasin. Um, but they're in fact a non-venomous. A, he's a fish eater. He eats amphibians and just kind of anything cruising along the bank they didn't get a hold of. Sometimes they'll eat rodents, but primarily they're an aquatic snake and aquatic feeder. Now the re one of the ways you can tell them apart 
from a its venomous uh, counterpart, so to speak, is obviously the shape of the head. Now this guy clearly doesn't have a diamond shaped head. However, when he gets angry or threatened, they can kind of squirrel their neck back a little bit like that to make it look triangular. However, it's not distinct like a copper head or a cotton mouth. Um, his eyes actually <clears throat> are situated more on the top of his head and they're more rounded in their pupils. Now I get it, you're probably not gonna get close enough to identify them based on the shape of their eyes. The big giveaway is the shape of the head. Um, and just kind of knowing where you're at. Typically where we are right now in this area, cotton mouths don't, <coughs> sorry, fly flew in there again. Cotton mouths don't typically range here. They're just a great snake. Now if you can smell that, try to smell it. Oh, it's so gross. She's putting out some musk right now. It's one of their lines of defense. So they're not an evil animal, but she's scared of me right now because she perceives me as a predator. Well, she doesn't really know what's going on. So she'll put out this musk. Sometimes they will thrash and bite, but as you can see clearly, this snake has no interest in biting. She is really calm and docile. And if you handle them correctly, they're not going to want to, they're not going to want to perceive you much as a threat. Um, even though in her mind we are because we're so much bigger. It's just a great animal. Now you can notice on their scales, they have what's called keeled scales. They're raised, it's almost like a little bit of a, a hardened section in the middle of their scale, like a keratin uh, in their scale. A lot of aquatic species will have that. And uh, not sure what else to tell you, so we're gonna go ahead and let her go and uh, keep finding cool stuff. So this is, I'm gonna call it a Midland water snake. I think it's a Midland subspecies of the common water snake. And uh, this little guy right here was sticking out from the edge of this bank, probably looking for the green frogs and bullfrogs that we've been hearing out hunting. And, uh, cool snake, starting to calm down a little bit. Realizes I'm not gonna hurt it. It's a little bit more light colored than the last one we found. There's a lot of variation in this species. Here we go. Now she realizes that I'm not doing her any harm. Hey guys, thanks for watching this episode of Catching Creation. I'm here with Ben. And uh, Thomas is on the camera tonight. We've been walking around and found some cool water snakes, some frogs, and some uh, it's a turtle. And uh, it's just been a fun night. It's real humid. It feels jungly out here. So thanks for watching. Please remember to share, like, and subscribe if you're watching this on our YouTube channel. Uh, ben actually works for the Orient Society. They're a great conservation organization. So if you're interested in reptile conservation at all, uh, something made a weird noise. Be sure to check them out. We'll put a link in our description uh, so that you can join them. Uh, a lot of the proceeds go towards, uh, well, you can tell them better hey, than I can. We uh, do a lot of conservation with the indigo snake and uh, the longleaf pine ecosystem. We restore habitat for gopher tortoises and a whole suite of imperiled reptiles and amphibians. So uh, a lot of important work. So it's a great organization. I, I highly suggest you guys support them if you can because uh, we love these animals and I, I definitely want to keep seeing more of them in the wild and, and show you guys more of these things. So again, thanks for watching. This is Stan Lake, out.